This is the Ninebot Max electric scooter by Segway. You may have seen our recent one wheel review. Around the same time I got that, I picked this up for my wife to help her get around the college campus. And while I would say she is technically the primary rider, I definitely ride it pretty regularly just to make sure it's working properly, of course. This isn't the Razor scooter you had as a kid. We're talking 18.6 miles per hour top speed out of that 350 watt motor, 40.4 miles of range from the 551 watt hour battery that takes about six hours to charge. There's three riding modes for whatever you need. It also has a pretty nifty mobile app too. This baby has a lot of bells and whistles, and it's not the cheapest scooter you can find out there or on Segway's website for that matter, but it can be had for around 900 bucks. Let's see if it justifies that price. The first thing you might notice about this scooter is that it looks good. It seems like they put work into the build quality, and it's quite a bit bigger than you might think. I also like the design, something you can expect with Segway, and that's a brand name that we've heard for a long time, and I find that encouraging over a brand that I've never heard of or <laughs> can't even pronounce. Something I really love, and I know my wife does too, is that long, long range, and that seems to be what drives the price up here. Typically, the similar scooters get only about 25 miles or so, so you are getting quite a bit more, and you'll notice that the foot pad is actually quite a bit thicker to accommodate that battery. She only charges it every other week or so, using it to get around campus, rush between classes, or just cruise around town. And that's something we do often. We really enjoy going riding together, whether that's just in the neighborhood or going on longer uh, rides on the bike trails. It's good to know that you've got plenty of battery to work with. Your power draw is going to be different between the three different riding modes. I will say it's pretty weight dependent. You might get a little bit better speeds, a little bit better battery, of course, uh, if you're lighter than I am. In eco mode, you're looking at about four to seven miles per hour. All right for coasting down a hill, pretty useless for anything else. The standard or drive mode kicks it up a little bit around 10 to 14 miles per hour. Not bad if you're on flat ground, but assuming you're a somewhat decent rider, I'd never run anything less than sport. There you can consistently hit top speed. You can also go up moderate hills pretty reliably. It's just the overall best experience, and with the big battery, you shouldn't have to be concerned. And remember, that's with me riding on it. It might be a little bit different for you. When you reach your destination, there is some portability here. The handlebars fold down and latch, allowing you to store it or carry it, but good luck with that because this monster weighs 40 pounds. I can't tell you how many times I've been asked to carry it inside. Now, if you're just setting it inside the door or carrying it short ways, it's fine, but don't expect to be lugging it through the grocery store. You might as well just push it along at that point. You can enable a motor-assisted walking mode in the app, which is great but it's not that hard to push it anyway, and I don't always wanna pull out my phone. So another option is using the app to lock the scooter, preventing someone from riding it, but it doesn't do much to prohibit them from just pushing it away, except a very discouraging beep. <laughs> and it also won't stop them from lifting it into their car and bolting. Personally, I've never used it. I think Taryn maybe has once. Uh, not something I would depend on, but it could be a great way to ground your kids or prank your spouse. It does have a headlight and tail light, and I'll say the headlight isn't the strongest and it does point more at the ground, so I wouldn't really depend on riding in the dark. Not that I really would anyway, but it does help a little bit. And that's something to think about. If you do food delivery, DoorDash, whatever, this might be a good way to save some gas money and just have some fun while on the job. And somebody orders chicken nuggets at 2 a.m., You've got that headlight to help you out, you're totally fine. And if you happen to run over a crack that you didn't see in the street on the way to McDonald's, these have 10 inch pneumatic, that's air filled tires. They're pretty good. They offer an overall comfortable ride. They can take some bumps, dirt, gravel. You can kind of cut through the grass. They're pretty good wheels. This isn't a bona fide off-road machine, but it's pretty capable and comfortable overall. And if you ever run into any traffic out there on the street, you do have this cute little bell to help you out. <laughs> but in all seriousness, it does help you when passing people walking or biking on a trail. This scooter is a joy to ride. It's fast, it's comfortable, and if you don't live too far away from work or school, you can ride there every day and charge overnight if you have to, but really, I don't think you will. The range on this scooter is absolutely incredible. I think it's one of the best features. If you're gonna get it, I've linked it in the description below. There's also a lot of other scooters out there. If you'd like to see reviews on some more scooters, let us know. 
Thanks for watching and subscribing. Till next time, see ya.